and this is case number eight, and this is a 30-year-old male with headaches. On your left, you have a non-contrast T1 mid-sagittal image. In the center, you have a postcatalinium T1 image through the area of interest. And on your right, you have an axial flare image. Give you a couple of seconds to look at the case. Uh, is it politically correct to show this case with what's going on? I don't know. Let's see. First question. The most likely diagnosis is A, a subependymoma, B, a cord plexus papilloma, C, an epidermoid, D, cystosarcosis, or E, metastasis. Count them, please. Okay, let's see the answer. And the majority of you answered D, and that is the correct answer. So here we have a case of a subependymoma. The most common site in adults is the obits of the fourth ventricle. When they are small, they tend to be incidental findings like seen in this case, but when they get large, they do produce hydrocephalus. They are basically indistinguishable from in their imaging appearance from the core plexus papillomas like seen in this case. In this case, the fourth ventricle is a little bit dilated, although there's no hydrocephalus. I was wondering if perhaps there is a little bit of overproduction of CSF by this small core plexus papilloma. Epidermos generally have uh, this kind of dirty T1 weighted appearance. They may expand the fourth ventricle. They have the scallop margins. And although the most common region in the posterior fossa is the CP angle cistern, they may occur in the fourth ventricle. Now, if you have any trouble distinguishing them from a cystic mass, you do a diffusion weighted imaging. And on the diffusion weighted imaging, epidermos tend to have very high signal intensity. Okay, question number two on case eight. One gets. Uh, I'm sorry, guys, I think some of you might be eating. One gets cystosarcosis from A, eating undercooked pork, uh, B, eating vegetables contaminated with pork feces, C, eating vegetables contaminated with human feces, and E, contact with infected saliva. Okay, let's start the countdown. So which... Which type of food are we going to avoid at lunch? Let's see. And the majority is undercooked pork. And actually, the correct answer is eating vegetables contaminated with human feces. OK. So what happens if we eat undercooked pork? We ingest the larva. The larva grow in our bowel. And we get worms in our bowel, intestinal teniasis. Then we shed the eggs of the worm in our feces. It contaminates the water. The water is used to water vegetables. We eat the vegetable contaminated with the water and the eggs of the worm. And then the gastric acid dissolves the tough layer, the coating of these eggs, and the eggs hatch. The larva penetrates the bowel wall and disseminates via hematogenous spread throughout the whole body with involvement of the central nervous system in 100% of the patients. I think that the second most common site of involvement will be the muscles. Okay, let's do a tough question, guys, here. Uh, calcified cystic lesions never enhance or have surrounding edema. Number one is true, and number two is false. Okay, let's start the countdown. timing. Okay, let's see the answer. And most of them you said is false, and that is correct. Let me show you a case from our place in which the lesions were already calcified, and you can see them as zones of very low signal intensity on the T2 weighted image. And following gadolinium, many of the calcified lesions here, 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 and here are demonstrating contrast enhancement, so that is not a rare thing to find. Now, there's been a couple of articles in the literature describing that you can also have edema, not only contrast enhancement, and here's a patient from an article that appeared earlier this year in the AJNR, and you have basically a patient that has had chronic lesions, and when the patient was given treatment for other lesions, he developed maybe a uh, reaction around the lesions that were already calcified and healed, demonstrating uh, contrast enhancement in those lesions and demonstrating two edema on the flare image. So it is possible occasionally, although the lesions are calcified, and are said to be dead to have still an immunological reaction. 